What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel. Dan here from Headwaters, and today we're gonna go kayaking, as you can see by the kayaks on my car. And you say to yourself, well, Dan, there's no kayaks on your car. That's the point of today's video. We're talking all about portability, and the two kayaks I have today are the two most portable kayaks I have in my current demo fleet. The first one being the Oru Inlet. This thing is less than 20 pounds, folds up into a little box, and comes in at about nine foot six. And uh, we're gonna unfold this, take it for a paddle, and compare it to the Eddyline Skylark. This is a hard shell kayak, it doesn't break down, but it does still fit inside an SUV and I think it has some serious advantages. And I wanna talk about the differences between a regular hard shell and a collapsible portable. So let's get into it. So the advantage of the Eddy line is pretty standard. It's already done. I'm ready to go hit the water. No setup, no fuss, no muss. The downside is you got to live around a 10 foot kayak. You've got to store this thing. You've got to transport it. But the reason I chose the Sky 10 is because it does fit into a lot of smaller SUVs. I drive a Chevy Traverse, but I put them in Subaru Outbacks, Foresters, CRVs. They basically just slide up between the driver's seat and the passenger seat and touch the rear hatch. And it works for a lot of people to get on the water. So the great thing about Oru kayaks is just how small they pack down. You can fit this in any car. You don't have to have an SUV. You don't have to have a garage space or a, you know, a corner of your living room dedicated to your kayak. You can have this shoved in a closet. But there are some disadvantages and that's really what I wanted to talk about today to help you figure out what is the right kayak for you and your needs. So let's go ahead and get this Oru set up. The website says three minutes assembly time. We're gonna put that to the test. And then we're gonna compare these kayaks back to back and see how they paddle. Get set, go. Okay, here we go. Ooh, two minutes and 30 seconds. Not bad, 30 seconds faster than what they said. I'm not competitive at all, you guys, but uh, it's good to know. So we're here to talk about the pros and the cons, and I think the pros of the Oru's are pretty self-explanatory. You saw how small this thing packed down. This aspect right here, one finger light. You can just pick this thing up, throw it over your head, get it to the water. And the fact that this holds a 220 pound man and is gonna allow me to go kayaking today. And then at the end of the day, it folds up into a box that I can shove in a closet. It's just really cool, really unique. You gotta take your hats off to Oru Kayaks. They've done an amazing job creating a product that's, I don't know, completely one of a kind. I don't know of anything else like it in the market. And uh, it is definitely cool. The Eddy line, on the flip side of that, I think you have a little bit more robustness, more durability, more longevity. This boat's gonna take a beating and come back for more. I worry a little bit about the longevity of the Oru, just folding it up and folding it out. I'd love to hear from you guys, somebody that owns these kayaks and has spent a lot of time in them. Uh, how does this thing hold up over time? That would be my only concern. I'm looking at some of the folds and I'm noticing, you know, just little, little creases like this right here and the little white spots. I don't know much about it, but it just makes me a little nervous right off the bat. I think I did this wrong. Look at that, I think I did this part wrong. I think the fold's supposed to go that way. Ah. Maybe that's why. Yeah, I like that. All right, now that I did that, you can see it looks a little bit better, but, but the creases are still there. You can still see that. I mean, it has to fold up. That's the cool thing about it. That's what makes it unique. So we're not gonna knock it. We're gonna take it out and take it for a paddle. As far as durability goes, I do see a couple of things on the bottom here. Looks like they've got these little rubber bumpers on the bottom. That's where your feet would go. That's where your butt would go. And I, I think that's gonna protect the hole a little bit. You know, this is plastic, so I, I'm sure it'll uh, be able to slide up and down the rocks and things like that. We're not gonna abuse it because Oru was nice enough to send it out to me, so I don't wanna damage their stuff. But I would love to hear from you guys if you own this long-term. Leave that in the comment section. Let me know your review. Now this boat on the other hand, the Sky 10, this is a well-loved boat. This thing has spent two seasons down at our boathouse, one of our go-to premium rental kayaks that goes out all the time, and it's been hammered. Not too worried about that one breaking down on me over time. Let's go for a paddle. I think I'm gonna jump in the Oru first because this boat has my curiosity pegged. I wanna see how it paddles for a 20 pound foldable kayak. Okay. 
Ooh, I need to adjust this thing way up. Ah, that's not bad. Now I'm all adjusted up. I've got a little bit of leg length left. Definitely feels like a small boat, but it fits me all right. I was able to adjust it so I have good upright paddling posture. You definitely sit on the bottom of this boat, so you kind of feel like, you know, the, the kayak's up high around you. Um, but all in all, it's pretty comfortable. You know, I can't expect too much from a, from a foldable kayak, but it's, it works, it's supportive. So last time I reviewed an Oru, it was an Oru Beach, which is a little bit longer kayak. It felt a little bit narrower. The first thing I noticed in this boat is it feels like I'm having to paddle over the top of it a little more, which I guess the nice thing is it's small, but I like the paddling station on that beach a little bit more because I wasn't clipping my hands as I went. This one I feel like I have to keep the paddle up a little bit. If I get lazy, I immediately start hitting my thumbs on that plastic combing. It has decent back support, but as I lean back, I can feel the whole thing flexing. Again, you know, you kind of got to expect some of that stuff on a folding kayak. It's not meant to be rigid and hard. You know, there's no wind right now. And with no wind, this kayak tracks really good. No problems at all. If I stop paddling, it starts to veer off a little bit, but not any worse than most nine foot six kayaks. You know, the longer the kayak is, the better it's gonna track. Same is true with the Oru's. I've actually been impressed with uh, the beach, the longer one I demoed. It had really decent tracking and glide for its size. I know they make a longer one as well. I was actually out on the bay the other day and there was a guy paddling around Angel Island in one of these, but he had the long, fast touring one. He had a skirt on it. So just like regular kayak, it's not a one size fits all. There's lots of different options out there to fit your style of paddling. So let's talk about the maneuverability of this boat. That's where small kayaks tend to do well, especially kayaks like this that have a nice flat bottom. I should be able to just put this paddle in the water, spin it basically two strokes, 180 degrees. Real easy to spin around. This thing would be great for floating like a little class one river. You know, you wouldn't want to take it on white water, but if somewhere where you need to maneuver and get through trees or getting current, it's very, very maneuverable. As far as outfitting goes and comfort, there's pretty sparse. You're sitting on the bottom of the boat with your legs straight out in front of you. So if you're someone who's prone to lower back issues, that's not a most comfortable position to be in. The other thing is the foot pedals. It's like a plate that's on here, which is cool. It's adjustable, um, but I'm used to foot pedals that are connected to the boat. So when I'm pushing with my feet, it just, the whole thing moves around a little bit. I feel a little disconnected. And again, it's a recreational basic kayak. It probably doesn't matter too much. The bigger problem for me is nowhere to put my knees. I'd like to have a kayak with at least somewhere to rest my legs against because sitting low, having kind of a, you know, medium sized backrest, but not a whole lot of support. And I'm starting to feel it already in my hips and my lower back. And we've only been out here maybe 15, 20 minutes. So, you know, that would be kind of my only gripe when it comes to the outfitting. So I think it's important to have some perspective here. When you spend $1,000 on a kayak, you're gonna get something. If you get a rotor molded kayak, well, rotor molding is fairly cheap. So those kayaks will have lots of features and accoutrements. With this kayak, you're spending $1,000 for portability. This thing packs down to nothing and weighs 20 pounds. So the convenience of storage, if I were to rate the comfort though, I would probably give it maybe a, a, a two out of five stars. Not, not the most comfortable boat I've ever been in. So the one thing I haven't really mentioned yet is stability of this boat. And I didn't mention it because honestly, I didn't think about it because it's really, really stable. The only thing that would make it feel a little bit sketchy is if it was wavy, I'm not really connected to this boat. On a lot of kayaks, you have five points of contact. You've got your feet, your knees, your butt, your hips, your back. On this boat, you're really just touching with your two sit bones, your lower back, and your feet. So. It's stable, but I definitely feel like I'm sitting in a boat. I'm definitely not connected to the boat. So where does this kayak come into play? This sort of thing right here. This is a launch 20 minutes from my house. I had this thing set up in two and a half minutes and I'm out here on the water, checking out the wildlife and going for a paddle. A lot of apartment dwellers or people driving small vehicles, it allows them to get out here and enjoy this for themselves. And that's what it's all about. So now we're gonna hop in the little Sky 10. I have to start this video by acknowledging the fact that I am too big for this boat. This is a tiny little boat and I'm kind of catering this video towards, I don't know, somebody that's maybe five foot to five foot eight, 
100 pounds to maybe 160, 170 pounds. You know, the Sky 10 is a small little boat. I'm 6'2", 220. So although I fit in it, both these boats are a little small for me. This one, I've got more traditional foot pedals. Yes. Ah, it already feels so much more comfortable. The difference being a more traditional kayak is gonna have five points of contact. So my feet, my thighs, my hips, my butt, and my back are all connected talking to the boat. So although the boat's a little narrower and a little skinnier, I feel like I have a lot more control, a lot more feedback to the boat, um, which I really find comfortable. The other thing I notice is the peak deck. I'm not gonna be clipping my knuckles near as much on this. Oh man, so much more comfortable. My back was really starting to hurt. I think we were out there probably a half hour total in the Oru. And it was beautiful, it was fun, but that flat seat and the lack of support for my knees just really started to ache my lower back and my hips. This feels a lot more supportive. So with a little narrower boat, I noticed a little bit easier glide. I will say that Oru being so light, it felt like a feather on the water in a good way and a bad way. A good way in the fact that it took no effort to get it going and get it moving. But the downside of that is in any sort of little breeze, it felt like it was getting pushed around a little more than the Sky 10. This one feels like it has a little better glide and definitely better tracking when I let off. The keel on this boat keeps it running true. The Oru, with the way it folds, has a little flatter bottom, whereas the Sky 10 has a little bit more V-shaped hole throughout. So I did mention it earlier, but this boat has a 50 pound lighter capacity, which means it's kind of geared towards a little bit smaller person. We talked about that earlier. With that said, it's not as stable for me as it would be for somebody that was 160, 170 pounds, just because I kind of overweight it. But it still feels really stable. It's more traditional kayak, like you can feel the keel, and then it has a secondary stability, whereas the Oru felt very primary stability. You don't really have the ability to edge or maneuver with the, uh, the Oru kayak, whereas this one, you have a lot more ability to connect to the boat and kind of get it to move under you. So the advantages of the hard shell is you're gonna have better speed, you're gonna have better glide, you're gonna have better tracking. The disadvantage is obviously the portability. Not everyone's gonna be able to maneuver this boat around. But I wanted to compare it because I see a lot of folks buying the Oru kayak that have small SUVs and they have a garage and they're buying them just because they're small. And I don't think that they realize the sacrifices that they're making. So not saying you shouldn't buy an Oru, I'm just saying if you're buying an Oru, make sure you're buying it for the right reasons. The other thing you're getting with the kayak like the Sky 10 is two bulkheads. Not every recreational kayak has that, but it is something to look for, is that means it's a hatch in the front, a hatch in the back, positive air buoyancy. So if this kayak were to capsize, I'm gonna be able to get back into it and paddle it to shore. So the tracking's obviously better, but the other thing is the maneuverability. You know, the Oru, I think I had two strokes and I could spin the whole thing around. That's well, about the same. Two, maybe three strokes. In the Sky 10, we do have more keel, and that's gonna make it a little trickier to turn, but it's also gonna help us cut through waves, glide, track, all the other character traits you want in a flatwater boat. So we're getting a little waves and a little wind from this angle. Nothing crazy, but maybe five miles an hour, enough to push the boat around. This boat definitely glides and doesn't get blown around near as much as the Oru. Just has a little bit better tracking with that hard shell. I really think that was a perfect comparison to have both these boats out here on this day and have it be glass and have a little bit of wind and challenging water. I say challenging, I mean, this is pretty calm, but you know, a little bit enough to test the boats and to really feel the difference between the two. The Eddie line definitely handled a little bit of chop and a little bit of wind much better than the Oru did. That was a lot of fun. It was really neat to see these two kayaks that have very similar stats on the water back to back and see how they compare. I could totally see why somebody would buy an Oru. If I was an apartment dweller, if I had a small, you know, Prius or a Tesla or something that I needed to pack this thing down and shove it in the back seat, I would own, a, I would own an Oru. I might get a better, comfier chair to have with me, like maybe an office chair pad or something to support me a little bit more. But all in all, great boat. I love the fact that it's 20 pounds and almost anyone can handle it. And it gets you out here, it gets you on the water. The Sky 10, on the other hand, takes a little bit more work. You're gonna to need to get either roof racks or have an SUV that'll fit inside. Um, you know, it's a little harder to deal with off the water, but the experience on the water was substantially better. The comfort was not even in the same ballpark. The tracking, performance, all of that was better on the Eddy line. And I think that would really go for any small, light, hard shell kayak. You know, the Dagger Zydeco comes to mind is a small, portable, rotomolded kayak that's you know under a thousand bucks, probably real similar to the uh, the inlet here. But I like the Sky 10 in particular because of its lightweight. 
32 pounds and it has double bulkheads. It's a lot of boat for the money. And if you're looking to get into the sport, you won't regret buying this little boat right here. And I think what we're gonna do, since we're out here anyway, I think we're gonna go ahead and get these boats back on the water and we're gonna shoot a second video. I'm gonna do a rescue in the Oru with no buoyancy whatsoever. So take the float bags out. And then I'm gonna try to do a rescue with the float bags. And then lastly, I'm gonna try to rescue the Sky 10 to try to do a kind of a visual experiment of what it's like and why flotation is so important. So thanks so much for hanging out and paddling kayaks with us today. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, leave us a comment. I'd love to know what you think about either one of these boats. Would you potentially consider buying an Oru? Are you more of a hard shell person? I'd love to hear it. Until next time, you guys, this is Dan wishing you happy paddling. We'll see you on the next one.